there is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is whether only the crisis should come sooner as a result of the voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion, or later, as a final total catastrophe of the currency system is involved. Ludwig von Mises Our entire way of life is based off of a debt-based currency that must create more debt every year in excess of the debt and interest accrued the year before. This is because every dollar that comes into existence is debt, with a certain amount of interest attached to it. When debt is created, money is created. When debt is paid off, money is destroyed. The real trick is that the money that is owed for the interest does not exist, since only the principal of the loan is ever put into the economy. The only way that this interest can be paid is by more debt being created to pay for the previous debt and interest. This is why we have an ever-expanding exponential growth in debt that cannot be stopped. In the end, we're all dead. John Maynard Keynes The dollar collapse is a mathematically inevitable event. It will be the single largest event in human history. At some point, the debt incurred will be more than the real economy can bear, and there will be a default of non-payment. Or, the other way to default on that payment is that we constantly print more money to keep the system going, so much so that we eventually destroy the value of the currency and people lose faith in it, which leads to a rush out of that currency and into a hyperinflationary depression. One key aspect of this default is that nations that owe debt to foreigners simply default on the debt like Greece will eventually do. But those nations like ours, that print our own debt-based currency, have every single time paid the debt with increasingly worthless currency to the point that we reach a hyperinflation. And we can guarantee cash benefits as far out and at whatever size you like, but we cannot guarantee their purchasing power. When one realizes this foundation of our entire way of life has cancer, the debt, the dollar, the economy, the stocks, the real estate, the pensions, our entire current unsustainable way of life ends. We can, at this late date, have a deflationary crash or a hyperinflationary depression. Nothing is written in stone. We can have a deflationary depression if the politicians stop creating more debt and refuse to raise the debt ceiling. With no more debt coming into the system, we would have the mother of all margin calls the world over, almost immediately. The highly leveraged world of banking would be forced to deleverage to meet their debt obligations. This would seize the markets and the economy as a whole, and it would happen within a matter of a few days. Austerity is another way deflation can happen. When nations restrict the amount of money spent into the economy by cutting services and payments, it limits the amount of money in circulation. Since the interest money is still sucking from the real economy, and there is no more money coming back in as this deflationary action on the economy grinds to a halt, and those most dependent upon those payments will be screaming the loudest. The masses will beg and fight for more spending, and eventually the politicians will cave and give the masses what they want, more money. Every country that engages in austerity will abandon it as political pressure grows and the fact that with less government money in the system, the more the Keynesian parasitical system will collapse. Tax revenues shrink faster than the spending cuts, and this will increase the deficits. This is a ploy that the bankers benefit from, because austerity really means sacrificing the masses' lives so that the bankers' portfolios can perform. The politicians play this dangerous gambit because they want the people to beg them for more money. The game they play with the whiff of deflation and then opening up the money spigots is a very successful dialectic that has empowered this parasitical ruling class for ages. We could also have a deflationary depression if a nation like Greece defaults and the ECB does not flood the system with more euros to cover the losses in the system. By Greece defaulting on their debts, the banking system would seize up as banks become blatantly insolvent, as their equity positions are destroyed. This again would force everyone to sell their assets in a cascading mess to cover their losses. The deflation in the system is the most immediate and destructive choice. It is easy to find out who caused it, and it's difficult for people's confidence to return after it starts. This is why the Fed and the ECB have been furiously working on acronym schemes like QE1 and 2, Operation Twist, LTRO, and the Fed's secretive $16 trillion slush fund that supports insolvent zombie banks and the system they hold up. Once the ECB starts covering the losses in the banking system, this will give cover to all other Western central banks to print as these currencies fall relative to one another. Trillions will start flowing and the world will be rocked just as it was in 2008. But this time it will not be billion dollar institutions that are broken. 
This time around, it will be trillion-dollar nations and quadrillion-dollar markets 